Joining me live is Green Senator David Shoebridge. Good morning to you, Senator. Thanks for your time this morning. Starting off in the Middle East, there has been a clear escalation in violence and the conflict over there. Uh, your party has been critical of the government's support uh, of this conflict. Um, tell me, where does this latest development sit with your party? Well, we, of course, are deeply concerned that we're seeing the very escalation that just 24 hours before these attacks on Yemen, the US and um, even the Australian Prime Minister were saying should not happen. You know, we, we saw the US envoys in the region uh, speaking with all of the regional governments and, and urging a de-escalation, saying everything should be done to prevent this escalating. We saw this, basically the same statement from the Australian Prime Minister two days ago. And yet, you know, in, in, a, in an act of what most people in the region and many independent observers would say is an act of extraordinary hypocrisy, we then see this, this quite large attack, this huge attack on Yemen, um, almost designed to escalate. And it's hard to see how any reasonable person could think it won't do anything other than escalate it. We're already seeing a response on the ground in Yemen, a country that is uh, recovering from deeply, deeply... Um, damaging civil war, a, a country that um, is controlled by a very extremist regime. And it's very likely that's just going to lead to further escalation. Whoever thought that this would settle things down in Yemen um, hasn't learned the history. This is one of the sh busiest shipping lanes in the world, though. How do you suggest that the Australian government goes about dealing with this issue and, and the safety of the ships that are using that passage? Well, well first of all, this response is basically just set fire to the region even further. So it's hard to see how this is anything going to in any way assist in making the international shipping lanes safer. But, but more fundamentally, if we want to resolve the raft of tensions that are, are forming in the region now, the, the raft of conflicts that are forming in the region, the root cause needs to be addressed, and that means to end the war on Gaza and an urgent, immediate and permanent ceasefire needs to be negotiated. How... The West is managing to ignore that as the root cause of so much of the conflict in the Middle East is, is remarkable. I mean, obviously, that's where the attention needs to be um, addressed. And our government is refusing to really address that in, in the way it should. And the United States is giving political cover to Israel. And talking about uh, the International Court of Justice examining Israel's offensive, how significant do you think this is? Well, I think... Um, you know, many people would have seen the presentation that was put by South Africa, a very carefully brought together, piecing together of the evidence, which I think for any independent observer would have raised very real concerns about the intent of the state of Israel um, and the extreme level of civilian deaths and the disproportionate degree of civilian deaths that have, that have been occasioned from the war on Gaza. And that's at the root cause of the South, Af at, the, at the root of South Africa's claim about genocide. And it was, I thought, put in an extremely compelling fashion by South Africa. And uh, particularly when you see some of those comments, those biblical references to, to the extermination of a people that came from the Israeli Prime Minister, the extremist comments that have come from senior members of, of the Cabinet, and you tie that together with the appalling um, attack on civilians on the ground, <coughs> some two and a half million people effectively homeless. Um, you... I thought South Africa made a compelling case. Do you not think that Israel has a right to defend itself? Well, of course, a right to defence is a right to defence your homeland. It's not a right to inflict um, violence on an occupied people. And the right to defence must always be proportionate and consistent with international law. And what South Africa said was pretty much all of those elements are missing in the way in which Israel is undertaking its war on Gaza. Let's move on to Julian Assange. It's been almost four months since you visited the United States in a cross-party delegation and there seems to be no movement on the case. Is that disappointing? Well, I think what we've seen since that delegation is, uh, you know, a spot fire has been lit in Congress and uh, members of Congress from across the political divide are now agitating um, uh, directly the Biden administration for the end of the prosecution of Julian Assange. We've seen a, a significantly increased amount of political and um, media comment on Assange in the United States. And we've seen resolutions tabled in Congress and direct communications made to um, uh, President Biden. So 
Um, I I think the the work that myself and my colleagues did, and you know, it was a very diverse delegation that went all the way from Barnaby Joyce on one side to myself on the other. It certainly um, was. I, I, I think it was. Um, I, I think it's valuable work. I think we're continuing to see the fruits of that, and and you know, I think the Biden administration is in a real is in a real fix here. Does it continue to prosecute somebody um, for the crime of telling the truth when you know they are meant to be the you know the world's largest democracy with a fundamental constitutionally enshrined right to basically tell the truth? I mean that that is that is the question that's now being put directly to the Biden administration. It's very uncomfortable for them. And just quickly before you go, you are off to Indonesia today for a tour, a parliamentary tour, basically focusing on health issues in Indonesia. Uh, just quickly, what do you hope to achieve over there? Well, this is a tour we're doing um, hosted by Save the Children. And, and it's really focused on, yes, children's health, some of the inequities and, and how Australian aid can address some of those regional e uh, inequities. It's focused on women's empowerment, which I think is a critical part of Australia's aid in the region. Um, and we're also going to see some of the excellent work that the Fred Hollows um, uh, Foundation is doing to restore people's sight. I mean, there are millions of people in Indonesia who are suffering from blindness, um, which can largely be eradicated by the surgery that Fred Hollows can do. So I think ensuring that Australian aid is going um, to, to the places that can be most effective to get a better understanding of the needs from one of our most important um, regional neighbours and to see how these country-to-country -country, um, exchanges, um, our aid, our, our, our mutual programs, see how they can be a benefit to Australia and Indonesia. I think it's important work. And I think Save the Children are doing some really excellent work on the ground, which I, I, I think it'll be a privilege to see.